if I go to China, they have a different name for us other than what God called us. All the nations were complicit in destroying us as a people. All of them. And the, one of the ultimate culminations of that is we still carry their names to this day. And we, we proudly carry their names. We'll get together and go, the 20th Johnson family reunion. Mind you, Johnson's ancestors raped, killed, and destroyed your ancestors. Bring it up. I don't want his name. What? I don't want to glorify his name. Right. Damn that Johnson family reunion. Let's get this Israelite family reunion. That's, That's right. right. Come back to who we are as a people. Drop what you got. Give me CTF and 9 2 and 1. Bring it up. I'm going to ask you something about our people as a community, and I want you to tell me if it's true or not. We don't have community. Right oh, here. sis, 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 you already hit it on the head. You already hit it on the head. We're going to read what the Bible says, because we need community. And like right. I said, we ain't got it. But there's a reason why we don't have it. Because before we used to have it. Right. Read what you got. Simple now, chapter 2 and verse 1. Come on. Check it out. Gather yourselves together. Gather together means come together, right? Come together. Read. Yeah, gather together, O nation, not desire. So this instruction is given to a particular group of people. Uh, Read that last line again. Yeah, gather together, uh -huh. O nation, not desire. What group of people on this earth is not desired? So-called Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. Because we can't forget our Hispanic and American Indian brothers. Right now, they are actively trying to build a wall to keep out our Hispanic brothers. Right. Why? Because they're not desired. Just like we're not desired. When we move into a neighborhood, they say, there goes the neighborhood, and white people move out. Why? Because we're not desired. So the scriptures say, because nobody wants us, we got to gather together. We got to warn each other. But we don't. Why is that? We are chosen people. We're the chosen people, but why don't we want to be around each other? Why? Because we don't want to like, we don't want, we don't want to see nobody else grow. You don't want to see nobody grow? That's, I mean, we don't want to, they don't have no, they don't have no unity. They don't accept people because they want, they think they got more than what we got. Here's why we don't want to be around each other. Give me Leviticus 19 and 17. Bring it up. We don't want to be around each other since we can hate each other. Right. When we look at each other, when I look at a brother walking down the street, I, I think he's going to try to attack me and steal my wallet before I think that's a brother I can build with. Right. And we don't try to bridge those gaps with each other. Right. Read what you got. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 17. Come on. Bring it up. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. So one of the commandments we were given as the children of Israel is we should not hate our brother or our sister in our heart. The heart's the mind. So when I think about you, I shouldn't be thinking about bad things towards you. I shouldn't hate you in my mind. Right. I shouldn't be like, uh, Here's an example of how we hate each other. I'm a brother, I go in the club, I see a sister I want to deal with. I hate you because I want to sleep with you, but I don't want to marry you. That's hatred according to the Bible. I shouldn't look at you like that. I'm in the club, I'm dancing, brother step on my shoe, I kill him that night in the parking lot. That's hatred. We look at each other with hatred. And so what happens is, it begins to breed contempt. And we go, you know what, I don't want to be around my people. Because it always ends in a bad life. But the scriptures say we're not supposed to think that way towards each other. Read what you got. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Come on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So when I don't hate my people, I correct them, right? So if I have truth and they do something wrong, if I love them, I'm going to correct them, right? If need be, I'm going to spank them, right? So if we correct our people, it's because we care about them. If I tell somebody not to run across the street, it's because I don't want to see them get hit by the car. If I didn't care about them, I let them do cartwheels in the street. So when the Bible says, you should not hate your brother in your heart, but you're still supposed to rebuke them, it's because we love our people, we want them to live. And so we're going to come out here and tell them, this is what God says, so you can live. We're giving you God's commandments so you can live. Why? That's right. Love our people will say, our people will, uh, they'll hear the commandments and they think we're coming against them. We're giving you the commandments because we love you. We want you to have eternal life. Right. Right now we die, like every other man on this earth. But when Christ comes, the black Messiah, he's going to bring salvation and eternal life to his people. Yes, but right. only if we have been keeping the laws until the end. Right. So because I love my people, I want you to live forever. I want to live forever. I want these brothers to live forever. So because I love my people, look, we got to do what God say. I want all of us to live forever. Not just me. I can't say I'm good, so that's it. I want all my people to be good. Right. Great men in history have always been worried about all their people. Women in history have always been worried about all their people. Right. Uh, Harriet Tubman was what? Worried about all her people. So great men and women are always concerned with the salvation of all their people. All the prophets in the Bible were worried about all their people. 
Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the black Messiah, was worried about all his people. That's why he went up there and died on the cross, and he didn't commit any sin. He was worried about all his people, not just himself. Right. Because he had done nothing wrong. It was us that did the violation, right? Right. Do what you got to get. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So Christ is of our people. He's our ancestor. He's also from the tribe of Judah. So I'm not supposed to hate my neighbor. Read that line up above again. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. So I shouldn't hate my brother in my heart. Christ, way, 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 way back, my great granddaddy brother. I hate him in my heart when I refuse to do the law, statutes, and commandments. I hate the sacrifice he made for me and my people when I refuse to hearken to his word when it's coming out. And the law says, I shall not hate my brother. We think Christ is some man unrelated to us. He is our brother. We one family. That's why he died for us. Only for us. Only for us. But what's the key part? We have to be doing what? Which is a what? A commandment. A commandment. So we got to do the commandments. So I'm going to give you a commandment, sis, okay? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. You okay. okay. want information in my mind for me to, to, for me to collect what, what you just gave me. I need, I need to sit on that. I'm going to give you one commandment to sit on, okay? okay. Check that fire out too when you get home. Call us that number on the back. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Do what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Now remember, this Bible is being written to who? The children of who? Us, Israel. Israel. Where do you fall at in the children of Israel? Judah. Judah chapter 2. How do you know? Let me get 1 Corinthians 11. We're going to 1 Corinthians 11 first. I'm going to give you two real quick. 1 Corinthians 11. So, we're trying to prove the fact to our people that we're Israel, right? So you say you're of Israel, tribe of Judah. I ask you, how do you know that? How you know that is the curses in the Bible and the prophecies that were going to happen to the children of Israel apply to your people. Right now. That's how you know it, right now. Nobody else can say they went into slavery on slave ship. Right. That was a curse that was written about as a punishment to the children of Israel in the last days. Right. The only people that went into slavery on slave ships were so-called blacks, Hispanics, because they went first. They went in 1492. So they went first. Blacks, Hispanics, and the American Indians. Because remember, when they came over here, the white people came over here, right. what did they do to the Indians? Slaughtered. Killed them, slaughtered them, enslaved them, stole their land. So right. they fit the persons. We're all one family. Because remember yeah. we talked about earlier, a house divided yeah. will fall. People. Okay. Now I look at the Hispanic brother and I think we're different. And they call us minorities. If we all knew we were one people, are we minorities anymore? We're the majority. We're the majority. Right. Do what you got. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Because remember, this is a uh, law. So it's the it's we didn't keep the commandments, it's why we're in the state we're in. Okay. So in order to get out of it, we gotta start keeping the commandments again. And I'm gonna I'm a hippie to some assist. The commandments are easy. They're not hard. That's right. If it was hard, I wouldn't be keeping. I don't like doing hard stuff. They're easy to do. Right. Read what you got. But I will have you know Come on. that the head of every man is Christ. So something we lack in our communities is order. We lack order and structure. Everybody's trying to be the chief, nobody wants to be the Indian. But you need order in order to have success. For us to gather together, people got to play their certain roles. Read that line again. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So as a man, I have to know that my head or who I'm supposed to follow orders from is Christ. So when Christ says do something, I'm supposed to be like, all right, Christ said do it, I'm going to do it. I'm in order. So if Christ said I have to get a job, I'm going to get a job. He says a man should be working. If Christ say I was supposed to put my pants up on my behind and not expose my buttocks, he said that through the mouth of the prophet. Christ spoke through the prophets in the Bible. So whatever instruction he gave to men, we follow those instructions. Because he's our head. That's right. right. And the head of the woman. And the head of the woman. So this is talking about you, sis. Read. Is the man. The man is the head of the woman. Let me explain. As a little girl, your father was your head. He, he, he protected the household, provided, took care of you, helped raise you. Eventually, you may grow up and get, what, a husband. Now your head becomes who? Your husband. Because he's going to do the same things your father did. Protect you, take care of you, nurture the household. And his, his head is Christ. He's supposed to be doing that because Christ told him to do it. Right? Read that line again. And the head of the woman is the man. So, the structure we need in the black community is the head of the man is Christ. The head of the woman is the man. If we knew our order, would we be arguing about things in really like we do in the household? The man and the wife get home together and they're arguing over stuff that's insignificant. And it causes breaks in our ability to what? Unify. 
We have to know our order so we can stay in it. Read. And the head of Christ is God. Christ even has, even has a head. He had to answer to the Father. He said, look, do you know not about my Father's business? So he was in order. He didn't do anything his Father didn't tell him he was supposed to be doing. So the man shouldn't do anything that Christ didn't tell us not to do. And the woman falling behind the man is, hey, I'm going to let you lead. I'm going to follow you. Right. That's the order. That's Read. right. Every man praying or prophesying. So now, praying or prophesying. When we pray at home as a man, or prophesying means to come out of the scriptures. If you're talking about the scriptures in any way, that's prophesying. Read. Having his head covered. So if I'm a man and I'm doing those two things, I'm praying or I'm prophesying, I'm going over the scriptures, and my head is covered, meaning I have a hat on or something over my head. Read. Dishonor his head. Who's the head of the man again? Christ, right? So if my head's covered when I'm praying or prophesying, I'm showing dishonor to him. It's easy to understand. When I go to the courthouse and the judge comes in, if I'm wearing a hat, what do I have to do with my hat? Take it off. Take it off. They got it from us. That's a sign of respect. So Christ demands that we show respect towards him. So as men, when the scriptures are coming out, I got to take my hat off. That's why you see all the men out here, because we know we're going to be in the midst of the scriptures, there's no coverings on our heads. So we don't disrespect Christ. That's a command. Right. Read. But every woman. But now the woman. Read. That pray or prophesy. If you're praying or if you decide to talk about the scriptures. Read. With her head uncovered. With her head uncovered. Right. So this head should be covered. Read. Dishonor her head. So when your head's uncovered, you're dishonoring the head that's over you. Right. So the woman showing respect to her head will cover her head in the midst of the scriptures or praying. The men, we have our heads uncovered. So what's the commandment that our women can start doing that will help get us back? Have our head right. Right? So that's only when the scriptures are coming out or when you're praying. That doesn't mean you got to walk around all day with your head covered. But these are the two times your head should be covered. When you're praying or when you're coming out, out of the scriptures as a woman. A man's head should be uncovered when he's doing those things, all right? Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. So we'll give you two to go on, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. It's the law. For the woman. It talks about the man too. Read. The woman huh? shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the woman shouldn't sis. How you already know that? But you out here, your head's uncovered and you're in pants. Okay. Now remember, we, we, we read earlier, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. But anyway, we still got it correct. Right. So we're not doing anything because we hate our people. Right. First, because you already know. It's important. We need you, sis. You are the great example to the younger women. They can't look at me and go, well, he's going to teach me how to wear a dress. They ain't putting on no damn dress. Okay. You need, our sisters need females like you who know what they're supposed to do okay. and do it, and now they have an example to look to. Right, right. Now they ain't got to be like, I turn on the TV, Nicki Minaj, she's doing this, she's twerking, she's showing all her skin, I'm going to be like that. I don't want to be like that. I know sister so-and-so, my mama, my auntie, my grandma, they all dress according to God's word. And I look at right, them, right. so I'm going to do what they're doing. It's very important. So when the scriptures say gather together, the women play a pivotal part because you're going to help raise up the young women. That's right. right. You, you played a crucial role in that. Look so when it says gather together, that's not just the men. That's not just the women. That's not just the kids. It's all of us. We all got to gather together. Read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaining to a man. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. In the same way a man, us men, should have put on women's yeah. garments. That's happening a lot these days. Yeah. Man purses, what's it called? A purse? A purse. That's a woman's garment. Right. Brother, get you a wallet. What the hell's wrong with you? Right. Get out. But because we're in Babylon, because we're in Babylon the Great, we're being taught to do everything opposite God's words, right? right? So, what's two laws you know you can start doing now? And you already knew. I'm presenting myself as you uh, Woman, okay. Garments, which means head. what else? Which means I'm respecting the head. So you have your head what? Covered. Head covered. When I'm praying and when I'm um, What should you be wearing too? I should have on a dress. A dress. A dress. It's not hard, sis. It's not hard. Yeah. Hey, come amongst us. I'm Call that you. number. If you come amongst us, if you need help getting these things, we're helping with these things. That's what it means to be a family and to come together. So we don't want to leave our people high and dry. If you're serious about keeping God's laws and commandments, we are serious about helping you keep God's laws and commandments. That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. We have our women meet with us at the school for class. They have 
Titus 2 meetings, what, every other week where the sisters get together. And Titus 2 is a chapter that explains the role of the women and what they're doing in the nation of Israel. So our women meet periodically for what's called Titus 2 chats, and they learn more about what it means to be a woman according to God's word, and what it means to be a princess. So check it out, sis. Check it out. Okay, okay, sis. I'll praise I'll praise So remember, we got to keep the commandments, all right, sis? I'll praise Give me a, a, a give me Proverbs one and twenty. Proverbs one and twenty. All praises, our people. The knowledge is raising up. That's what the enemy doesn't want to see. General knowledge about understanding who we are as God's chosen people and what we're supposed to be doing. The waters are rising. God's prophecy cannot be stopped. That's right. That's why right. this is bigger than one man. You can't just target one man and stop God's prophecy. That's why He said, "I'm gonna raise up 144." Good luck trying to kill 144. He said, I'm going to save one third. Good luck trying to stop one third, which is millions upon billions of people from keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments. Right. Right. This movement is bigger than just one person. Right. That's why right. it cannot be stopped. Right. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20. Come on. Wisdom cried without. She uttered her voice in the street. Wisdom cried without. Without means outside. Wisdom crieth outside. You have to go meet the people where they're at. The Bible says compel them to come in. That means go outside your house. That out. means leave the church, which teaches you to sit in there and sing songs and praises to write Jesus. Then teach you who you are according to the Bible. Right. You, you have to wisdom cry without. What use is all the wisdom in this Bible and you're not outside crying outside about the wisdom within this Bible. Right. It's showing our people what's going to heal them and save them. All right? Read. She cried in the chief place of concourse. We cry in the chief place of traffic, of business, of concourse. Brother, if you got any questions, come down this way, man. We are more than happy to answer whatever question you got, all right? Come down this way. Read that line again. Brother, brother, brother. So, the scriptures say that so-called Black Hispanics, Native Americans are gods upon the earth. Do we feel and look like gods right now? Read that line again. She crieth in the chief place. That she is wisdom. She crieth, meaning she speaks out loud. Read. Of concourse. Uh huh. In the openings of the gate. In the openings of what? Of the gate. I still ain't heard what you're supposed to just stay inside, stay on your computer, be behind a laptop. Wisdom means you go outside and put in bricks. Right. Bring it out. Read. In the city, she uttered her words. In the what? In the city. In the chat room. In the city. In the YouTube group. In the city. In the city. The prophets are going to go through the city to save their people. Right. Just like Christ and the disciples did. Just like Paul did. Just like all the prophets of old did. We traveled from city to city to talk to the people and teach them God's word. Right. Read. In the city she uttered her words. Come on. Saying, how long, ye simple ones. So we're in the city saying the same things the Bible say. How long, ye simple ones. Simple because we refuse to keep God's commandments. His laws will convert you from being simple. So since you're not keeping the laws, you're acting simple. So we're asking you, how long? How long are you going to be complacent with being a slave? Is Israel a home-born slave, like it says in Jeremiah? Read that line again. How long, ye simple ones? So how long, ye simple ones, you ones without the law, you Israelites, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? Read. Will ye love simplicity? How long will you love turning up in the club every Friday and Saturday night? That don't get old after a while. You get paid on Friday night. You broke on Saturday night. Now you complaining about going to work on Sunday night. That don't get old. How long, you simple ones? Read. And these scorners delight in their scorning. And the scorners, you are part of the simple ones. You are simple if you scorn against the prophets and God's word. Right. Because the Bible says God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, that too shall he reap. That's you right. think you're mocking God, but the scriptures say he's going to laugh at you when your calamity comes upon you. That's Read that's what right. you got. And fools hate knowledge. Fools hate knowledge. When the prophets come out and we give you God's word and his knowledge, fools will say, ah, I don't need that. That was back then. This is a different time now. We don't need that Bible. The scriptures say you are a fool if you behave that way. It says you are simple. You are a fool. Read. Turn you... Turn you at my reproof. We're supposed to turn at the reproof of God's word. When I hear God's word, I'm supposed to change my way. I'm supposed to turn at the reproof, which means go back to serving God. Now you will see the true men of God. We are not black men, we are the Israelites.
but you will sound odd For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it sounds wrong, man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.